Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest and greatest of our Kahoot for Schools webinar. We are so glad that you are here. Today in our one-hour workshop and webinar, we'll hear from educators and crew members to share how you, in your very own classroom room anywhere from around the globe, can transform your teaching with stellar time-saving tools already available and ready to use on the Kahoot platform. We have so, so much to cover today, from player tools and game modes to creator tools with AI. And before we jump in, I just want to share a few notes to help guide in your learning experience today and be sure everything is rare and ready to go. First, we'll be asking, asking for your points of view and your perspective throughout the webinar today via the chat. If you're not seeing the chat on your screen, please take a second now to refresh your browser so you can see the live time scroll and responses and contributions throughout the sessions today. As our webinar was getting started, we asked so many of you to share and tell us where you were tuning in from. And I'm seeing on my chat live hellos from Alabama, from Romania, from Spain, from Ukraine, so many different places to have you here and joining in from. Welcome. I see people from Brussels, from Croatia, from Montreal. We are so glad you're here. We are so glad to have such a global and inclusive community. And we are grateful that you are sharing your time with us today and so excited to share all new exciting features available for you to use and experience on the platform. Secondly, a quick note that this webinar will be recorded and shared today. So should you need to step away at any time, no problem. You can always rewatch and review the live sessions at your own pace on demand. We'll be sharing the webinar recording via email. So definitely stay tuned or check back on this event page on kahoot.com later this week for updates. We know and also hope that these sessions today are both meaningful and helpful in your professional development and your teacher growth. And we're excited to celebrate your learning with a PD certificate for you to add to your portfolio and your collection. We'll share the certificate to everyone and anyone who's registered for the event, and we'll share it via email. So again, be on the lookout for a downloadable and personalized copy to save for your records and help you claim PD credits on a local or school-specific basis. All right, we are ready to get started and excited to share. We're going to share all things that you can use to experience Kahoot learning and really get started and all things available and ready-made on the Kahoot platform. We are so glad you're here to continue learning, making things awesome, no matter where you use content or how you use content to make learning awesome, whether from your own library or from the channels and profiles of your own verified educators and creators. There are so many different ways to get started learning, created, and created creating and playing on the Coop platform. A quick question to help us really get started sharing, contributing, and collaborating today. I'm wondering, how do you typically transform teaching and learning on your own content available on Kahoot? Are you finding content from the Discover page? Are you finding content from your own libraries or even sharing across teachers? Take a second now, drop it in the chat. I'm excited to see and learn and listen from you. How are you using content available on the platform? I see people saying that they're using content from the Discover page. Amazing. See using content from their own library, creating their own, making their own, looking for other people's genius cahoots on the platform. Amazing. So excited to see and hear. Awesome. I know that we have so many different ways that we can access content on the platform or even from our own libraries. Finding content from the Discover page, whether from verified creators and partners or from your own libraries, or maybe even sharing across teachers is just one way that you can find content perfect for you and also ready-made to save time in lesson planning or even repurpose content that you know is perfect for you and your students based on suggestions from other teachers. Excited to hear your ideas and sharing. Amazing. Awesome to see. Creating your own from the Discover page. If you're not seeing the chat with me right now, feel free to refresh your page so you can see these contributions and perspectives as going, playing, and jumping right into content and learning. But without further ado, we really want to make sure that your learning is just right for your experience and just right for your learning and content. So we're going to jump in on different ways that you might even further support this content and experience 
on the platform and even on existing content or where you might find new content. We're going to jump right in with our first speaker today and first educator based in the Philippines. So it is super, super late in the day today, and we are so grateful, Daniel, for joining us today. Welcome, and we're excited to hear all the different ways that you're finding and using existing content on the Kahoot platform to get started playing, learning, and sharing right away. Welcome, Daniel. We're so glad you're here. Well, thanks, Hannah. Am I audible? Yeah, we can hear you. You're ready to go. Right. Okay. Uh, thanks for the warm introduction. Now let me share my screen. All right. We're good to go, Daniel. We can see it. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's delve a little deeper or a bit deeper into the treasure trove of uh, random content that Kahoot offers. As mentioned by Hannah, I'm Daniel Timbal, hailing from the vibrant city of Davao in the Philippines. So shout out to our Filipino educator viewers and subscribers out there watching us right now. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. So beyond being an MIEE fellow and an Adobe certified associate, I wear many hats including teaching science and visual graphics design. Additionally, I'm interested with the role of community engagement and extension in charge at our school. Now, if you're curious to explore more about my experiences and insights, feel free to check out my blog at the www.theborderlessclassroom.com. All right. So let's refocus on the star of the show, the ready-made content that you can trust, powered by Kahoot. Whether you are a Kahoot newbie, or a season pro navigating the platform's discover page, as uh, said by Hannah a while ago, is key. It's like a treasure map leading to a vast array of ready-made content waiting for you to, to be explored and used in your sessions. Imagine this. Over 30 million public cahoots at your fingertips all created and verified by teachers, our partners, and the Kahoot community. From first grade to college to onboarding new employees, there is something for everyone. So these Kahoots are neatly categorized into, into featured sections, premium collections, and channels made by educators for educators. And speaking of educators, let's take a moment to appreciate the verified educators, those unsung heroes who craft credible, reliable, and meaningful content that we can trust. So, but that's not all. Kahoot also collaborates with numerous partners and content providers. Over 70 plus and counting different publishing brands and curriculum partners. So we have Wikipedia, we have Microsoft, we have NASA, Marvel, Disney, and many, many, many more. So this ensures that the platform is a hub for curriculum aligned content and characters that educators and students already know and love. Now let me share my personal touch as someone deeply involved in teaching science. I often turn to the National Geographic collections available on Kahoot. It's like having a powerhouse of engaging material right at my fingertips. And moreover also, I embrace the concept of sustainable development goals in my lessons, and Kahoot doesn't disappoint. Finding ready-made Kahoots that align with SDGs has never been easier. 
And here's a little insider tip or a kahoot hack, if you will. So when exploring content from our partners, try leveraging the seasonal themes and calendar events. Many collaborative brands release content ahead of calendar celebrations or current events, making it a fantastic resource for substitute or guest teacher plans. So let's uh, change the screen to my web browser. All right. Here. So as we uh, go to the Discover tab, you can find different connections in here. There. So there's so many collections. If you have not uh, click on this tab, so all you have to do is log into your account and click it. So many... Uh, there are a fantastic resource of uh, content inside the discovery page from renowned publishers. So when you're in a pinch, it's really a game changer. So as we approach different seasons and holidays right now, there, the Hoot Collections become your, be, uh, become your go to tool or finding ready-to-play content in seconds. So take, for instance, the collections curated by our partners at Wikipedia. So they specifically tailored collections to match upcoming December holidays. And when it's from Wikipedia, you know that the content is not just interesting, but also reliable and trustworthy. Now combine that with the familiar features of the Kahoot game experience, and you've got a winning formula for powerful and playful learning. So in essence, Kahoot is not just a platform. It is a dynamic ecosystem of educational possibilities. Now, with the ever-expanding library of ready-made content and the creativity of verified educators and partners, your teaching experience becomes not just efficient, but truly enjoyable. Now, as I've said, the discovery page is a vast universe. And finding the perfect Kahoot feels like searching for a needle on the haystack. That's where filters come in handy. For offering us a finely tuned search experience. So first, Let's talk about search terms and keywords. Now, these aren't just fancy features. These are your magic ones to narrow down the endless scroll of possibilities. So if you're looking for something specific, just type in on the search box, hit enter, and watch Kahoot brings you tailored results matching your exact needs. So I, I cannot see my my tab, so please spare me from um, shrinking my screen right now. So this is the search box of Kahoot. And I'm very sure you know how to use the search box. Just type in the keywords in here. So let me demonstrate. Uh, our country, unfortunately, just experienced a major earthquake last Monday. And until now, we are experiencing aftershock. It's a 7.2 magnitude earthquake. And so for, uh, for this example, I want to have a previous session on earthquakes with my students. So if I'm looking for earthquakes, for example, I'll just type on the search box, earthquakes, and then press enter. Here, I can see so many results. It's like I've said, no, there is an endless scrolling here because this has so many results. But this doesn't stop here. We can filter 
the content based on individual cahoots like this or the entire comprehensive courses. Uh, this is a game changer for those who like to plan lessons with a holistic approach, ensuring seamless continuity in learning. But not only that, we can also filter or we can use the filter button. So you can see here when I click on the filters button, I can see here the premium. So these are premium content, the Kahoot Pass, Access, uh, Access Pass, Kahoot Marketplace. I can also uh, filter on the subjects, on different subjects. So whether you're teaching the intricacies of mathematics or the wonders of literature, Kahoot has content curated for every subject area. Now, the fix flexibility to choose based on content or based on grade level, rather, ensures that the material is just right for your students. So you can choose from pre-K up to uh, higher education or adult learning. Now, if you're in a multilingual environment, you can also filter or use the language filter. So this one. And furthermore, we can filter also based on the type of creator. So here, created by, you can click the down arrow here. So this can ensure that the content will align with your preferred teaching style or philosophy. So whether it's from a verified creator, a fellow educator, or a trusted partner, the choice is yours. How can we use these filters in the classroom? So we can we can use the content. We can use every content in every place. So let me share you some scenarios. So first, uh, ask bell ringers. So imagine your class with an engaging Kahoot to introduce themes before diving into a new teaching topic. So imagine that. Filters can help you find the perfect introductory quiz that sets the tone for a productive learning session. So the chat box is now very busy. All right. So we can also use it in individual student play uh, during class stations or small group activities. Students can play Kahoot individually, allowing for personalized learning experiences. Uh, filters make it easy to find content tailored to individual needs and preferences. All right. Another for a uh, fast finisher group during class time. So in a, in a dynamic classroom, some students finish tasks faster than others. Filters will be able you to quickly collocate Kahoot that are perfect for group activities, ensuring the fast finishers stay engaged and contribute to the col to collaborative learning. Also, uh, we can use it for last-minute activities. So let's uh, face it. Unexpected gaps in our class schedule happen sometimes. So with filters, you can swiftly find Kahoot to fill in those empty class times. So ensuring that every moment is utilized for meaningful learning. So in essence, so filter, keywords, and the categories are your allies in navigating the rich landscape of Kahoot content. So they transform the platform from, from a vast sea of possibilities into a precise curated collection that suits our teaching objectives and classroom dynamics. So go ahead, explore these filters. If you have not, go to the discovery page and let Kahoot become your personalized assistant in creating engaging 
and impactful learning experiences. The possibilities are as diverse as your imagination. So let's skip this conversation rolling in the chat. If you have questions or want to share your own Kahoot experiences, feel free to jump in. And thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to share with you uh, tonight here in the Philippines. Okay, good morning to other countries. Hannah? Thank you so much, Daniel, and excited to see all things um, content and content creation in the chat. Also, some questions about where this webinar is headed and what's to come. If you are here joining for the AI PDF import tools, thank you for being here. And we're so glad you're here and stay tuned. We have our session schedule sharing in the chat now, and we'll be sure to continue those sessions coming later on today. Thank you, Daniel, for joining. And no matter what content you use to make learning awesome, whether from your own library, as Daniel sharing or from channels and profiles of your creators and publishers on Kahoot. We hope that you can continue to rely on Kahoot, excuse me, for engaging, playful, and powerful learning experiences, especially as Daniel was sharing when you're in a pinch short on time or even bogged down with lesson planning yourself. Yeah. It started as a game-based learning platform back in 2013, and 10 years later, we're still focusing on student-centered, student-led learning built on a gamified learning experience. Chase Chatfield is here, Kahoot ambassador, middle school educator, and e-games aficionado to share how he has transformed his classroom engagement with Kahoot game modes, a variety of different formats and tools, and has some top tips to share on how to make it all happen in your very own classroom, too. Thank you for being here, Chase. Welcome, welcome. What's going on, everybody? Welcome from the Gulf Coast of Mississippi in the southern part of the United States, where it is a nice, cool 50 degrees right now. All right, Chase, I'm going to share screen so you can see and take it away. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. As Hannah said, it did start in about uh, 2013. Um, I was benefited of finding Kahoot in 2017. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the old school gaming modes um, that uh, they had and then where we are, uh, where we are now. So a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Chase Chatfield. I teach at Van Cleve Middle School in uh, Van Cleve, Mississippi. Um, I'm a sixth to eighth grade art teacher, but I also support other teachers in the school in science and math. And I'm also Time Magazine's Person of the Year for 2006. If you want to take a moment and Google it, you can, and you'll learn a little bit about my personality when you do. All right. So let's look at some of the old school things. Um, you know, there's the classic mode where you, uh, if you are not new to Kahoot, that at one point in time, the quizzes were four questions and times and points. Um, and you primarily used ghost mode, which I strongly encourage you to still do that. Um, ghost mode is a great way to help your students see that they've actually grown in their understanding of what they've been learning throughout the week um, by making sure they use the same names um, in both times. You simply go to your, um, sorry, I froze there for a second. You, uh, you, you go to the previously played games and you hit play again and your students will play against themselves. But now let's look with what the new game modes can do and how we can use those. So the first thing you need to do is understand, like, what do you need to get out of it? Um, are you going for mastery recall? Are you going for simply recognition? Um, in my class, um, the vocabulary is mostly about recognition and being able to apply, you know, words like saturation and balance and harmony in their in their pieces. So they don't need to know a word by word definition for it because they're not going to be tested on it, but they are going to need to show that they are proficient in using that in the art pieces that they have. The other thing is um, your class culture and, and your students. Um, do you have that class with the behavior this, this uh, semester and this year? Um, are your classes super competitive um, are they super relaxed and kind of like, yeah, whatever we do today is cool. You know, we like being here type of thing. And um, time availability, like, are you going to be using this as a as a bell ringer? Um, are you using it to fill some time uh, when there is a, a sub in the classroom? Things like that. So let's see what this looks like in, um, in action. So my go to one of my go to ones is chill art. 
obviously, because I'm an art teacher, but um, the some ways that you can see it there on the screen of how I uh, use the game in, in my classroom. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to give them an opportunity to kind of just introduce the material to them and let them kind of go through it at their own pace. Um, I want to make sure there's a purpose behind it. So if you can see in that picture in the top right corner, you see 112 paintbrushes there. So the goal in chill art is to ultimately paint the entire picture. But uh, you my first time through is we don't paint the picture first. I want them to focus solely on the content. So the goal is to collect paintbrushes. So there's still that little bit of competitiveness. And so some kids really get into it. Some kids don't. But the, the goal is they're going through all the words and they're learning the vocabulary. Um, and the second time I do it, I break off some of the time. So I go down to uh, five minutes and they collect paintbrushes. And then after they collect paintbrushes, they take two minutes as a class to completely paint the, the picture. If you look at the picture in the top left, you'll see it um, in the corner there that it says end now. So once the game is done for chill art, it's not actually done. So you'll have some students that may still have, you know, 35 paintbrushes, 110, four, um, whatever, how many paintbrushes they have. Um, you always want to give them the opportunity to uh, be able to use everything that they've earned. And then finally, to really challenge them in chill art, I drop it down again to five minutes but this is painting and answering questions. And so if you, again, on the picture on the left, you can see there's a lot of empty spaces and the chill art will adapt to how many students that you have in class and put out um, those number of spaces. So one of my classes, I'm very lucky to have 13 kids in there and I'll have about 35 to 40 of those spaces. Some uh, class, uh, my other two classes, I have uh, in excess of 25. And so, as you can see there, there's a ton of tiny little pieces. And there's really cool Easter eggs inside of Chill Art as well that they can find for finding the biggest piece, uh, filling in all the corners, and finding the super small piece. Um, I really enjoy this one uh, to get them to transition when they're coming from another class to my, my class, to get them ready to uh, change their brain from science or English or math or possibly lunch or break and um, get their mindset ready for Chill Art. The next one I use um, is for Treasure Trove. This is definitely an equalizer that says they're um, an equalizer um, for students because sometimes uh, with Kahoot, uh, the student mindset is, well, I know the answer, but I'm not fast enough with it. So I'm not going to be on the podium. And sometimes they want to give up. Treasure Trove for me has been a great way of combating that because it's uh, not all about just answering the questions quickly and accurately, but some of your, your, your gamer kids in there um, or the ones that have really good hand-eye coordination can click the treasures they flash across the screen. And so, um, as you can see right there, in an example, first place really dominated by, you know, over 3,000 uh, gold, and it shows on there. Not only that, but uh, the students are able to look on their device and on the main screen and constantly see the leaderboard change as the money changes. The beginning's pretty hectic, but uh, it's really, really cool. Um, and then the final one that I like to use is the submarine squad. Um, this one here is uh, I try to establish rules um, before the gameplay, especially if they're unfamiliar with it. And it also depends on, again, back on how my class is. Are they rambunctious? Are they kind of quiet? You know, what level of interaction do I get from them during class? So some of the things that I do is uh, this, the first round is a silent round where they're playing, they're focused on the words, um, and then the captain that has already been pre-selected, we know who they are, have been moved to a different table facing the rest of the classroom. You can see that in the uh, top left um, in both of those pictures, actually. And so from there, the students will then hold up their computer. And if you have that item on your screen, then you'll click it. And that helps the uh, submarine dive to the next level. Um, the second round um, that I do it uh, to really help apply, of course, the art aspect of it is I give them some expo markers and some erasers and we go from there and they draw it there. And then finally, if you if you're willing to handle it and they've got to burn some energy, it is full stand. We don't put people in any seats anywhere. And it's just a lot of yelling and hollering, the, uh, the shapes and figures that they need to they, they need to get. And um, so 
hopefully you grabbed a little something from that, got you something thinking of how to use it outside of what you've used it in the past. And uh, good luck and have fun applying the new game modes in Kahoot to your classroom. Stay awesome. Thank you so much, Chase. And always appreciate different ways that you can really repurpose content. So you are sharing three different rounds of gameplay and opportunity for students to really experience Kahoot and learn from Kahoot with content already available in your library or maybe games and Kahoots that you've relied on in past learning. And it's a really great option, not only for revamping that engagement, but of course, keeping our students and our learners really excited throughout that learning as well. And we appreciate appreciate your firsthand experience. Thank you so much. And thank goodness for all of these different ways that learning and teaching can be transformed from technology. And we know you're really excited and eager to hear about the way that AI assisted tools really help to make this even more awesome and all available and accessible within a platform we know and love on Kahoot. Sean is here to show us what's what and what's still to come with tools and features powered by AI. Welcome, Sean. It's glad to have you here. Uh, thank you, Hannah, and hello, everybody, and uh, thanks so much to Daniel and Chase for those uh, awesome uh, look into how Qt's being used in their classrooms. It's really great to see. Uh, and thank you, everyone out there, for spending a bit of time with us. Uh, I promise, it will, as always, it will be time well spent. Um, so we can have a presentation here uh, coming up. Perfect. Um, so just to kick things off, um, I think, you know, a you know, speaking to educators out there, we've done a couple of surveys now over the last, you know, couple of years, and we always hear the same thing, which is that if the one thing that could help an educator more is more time and probably no surprise to all of you out there. Uh, so today, what we really wanted to do was focus on tips and uh, tools that can help you become a more uh, productive Kahooter. Um, including, I must uh, I promise you, including things that are coming up with the AI assisted tools. Uh, we're gonna go through some of those now and then we're actually gonna get a demo a bit later. So stay tuned for that. So together we'll explore uh, finding a Kahoot uh, efficiently, playing a Kahoot, hopefully uh, impactfully and you know creating a Kahoot uh, effectively, good use of your time and making sure that um, it hits the mark every time. So let's start off with finding a Kahoot. Um, yeah, so there are already a hundred million public Kahoots to choose from. Uh, it is as uh, as we heard from Daniel, it's a bit. Sometimes it's a bit of a needle in a haystack, but we'll give you some tips to make that a little bit easier. Uh, so chances are the exact Kahoot that you want has already been made. Someone that has already made it out there. You just have to find it. Um, and as Daniel showed us already, you know maybe the best place to start. Uh, is actually on just, you know, the, the search bar on Discover uh, using, you know, filters and, and just being smart about how you use filters. Um, I will say, uh, I'm really happy to say that we are going to be adding AI and GPT to search to make it even easier for you to find absolutely exactly what you're looking for. Um, so the AI assisted search will be rolling out. Uh, it's rolling out now. Um, I think it's up to 10% now, but more and more people will get it. So give it a try over the next few weeks. Also, as Daniel showed us, the next way is really to find the perfect Kahoot is uh, through Discover in the categories. So you can see those highlighted there. Um, these are you know key subjects and areas of interest. And I will say in the last uh, meetup that we did, we got a lot of feedback about not being able to find uh, free content. So we are addressing that and we actually have updated some of these categories now have a lot more free content. So make it a little bit easier for you to get going uh, instead of uh, scrolling and scrolling. So we'll work on ways. We really appreciate that feedback and we'll work on ways to make your experience even better. We're also starting to add channels, which we're excited about, uh, which if you're in, a, hopefully you're all familiar with YouTube out there. Uh, it's similar, you know, you can follow your favorite educator creators who are of course uh, making some amazing cahoots. Uh, and for example, you know, here's a popular channel uh, for second grade math content from Mr. Kevin Hewson. Um, hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, and it's a mix of awesome free content and of course some paid content as well if you wanna support Kevin. Uh, so hopefully this will be a useful resource for you guys going forward. Um, next up is uh, your institution's own shared Kahoot workspace. Um, so this is available in Kahoot EDU. That's our solution for schools 
uh, districts and institutions. But in this workspace, you can, you know, you know, your colleagues can all share the content. And honestly, this is probably the best way for you to get extremely, you know, specific curriculum aligned content, um, which you can, of course, take and duplicate and do what you need to. It's a very good resource and, a, and another way that you could find uh, Cahoots that really matter for you. All right. Uh, and last, if you're almost like if you're totally completely out of time, like no time at all, uh, we have what's coming coming up called the quick launch bar. This isn't rolled out everywhere yet, so you might not see it, but this will will have sort of curated uh, seasonal and quite timely cahoots. Uh, and these are going to be great resources to really just like boost the class energy or simply reward the class. They're also going to be very helpful. All of the coots that we're having here are very helpful for substitute or supply teachers that might not have a Kahoot account. You won't need, a, you won't need an account to actually start these. So it's just one click um, and you're playing. So speaking of playing, let's go a little bit deeper uh, on playing Kahoot. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but we have, there were over 140 million hosted Kahoot sessions um, with 330 million participating players in the last year. Um, were you, any of you, one of those hosts? Uh, let us know if you were in the chat. Uh, how did it go? We'd love to know. So I wanted to start off with a few kind of like pro tips on how to get started playing faster. And these all involve just like toggling the right settings in the game lobby. Uh, and if you've never experienced the settings, that's when you start a queue to game, you have the pin, it's in the bottom right, you'll see a little sprocket. If you click that, you'll bring up this menu that you see on the screen. Um, and under that, you can choose, uh, there's a couple things you can do. Of course, you can choose language. Um, you know, there's 18 uh, uh, languages available on the platform. This is, of course, especially uh, very helpful for the youngest learners who may not have command of, of English, for example. Um, you can also toggle uh, the uh, show questions and answers. Uh, so that's at the very top of the menu. Uh, and that's a really great feature if you want uh, everyone to get both the questions and the answers on their device. Uh, and this is a real democratizer and game changer for everybody, especially those at the back of the class. You may not be able to see the screen. Uh, so just turn that on and everybody has the same uh, experience on their device. Um, and also works super well if, if you're in a sort of hybrid or high flex uh, learning environment where, of course, not everybody can see the screen that well. Uh, maybe an obvious one, but the QR code to pin in. Um, yeah, everybody knows. Everybody loves QR codes. Just, uh, uh, you know, scan that and away you go. You can click it. I don't know if a lot of, don't know if people know this, but you can just click, click it and you can make it a little bit bigger uh, so everybody can see that, including the kids at the back of the class. And if you're on Clever, uh, we have, uh, they have built a special Kahoot launcher where you can actually just take your Kahoot and launch it from inside Clever in because everybody's logged in, everyone's instantly logged in uh, or pinned into the into the Kahoot. So that's pretty cool. I know the team will drop a link to that, some documentation and, and some supporting uh, uh, articles on that. So check that one out if you're on Clever in the US. And the Philippines, they're also growing in the Philippines. So next up, um, I wanted to know if any of you guys have tried our student-led game modes. Uh, so if so, let us know in the chat, which is your favorite. I mean, Chase did a really uh, great overview of some of these. Uh, we have now seven modes uh, and more are coming. We have like a game mode factory here at Kahoot. So expect more uh, game modes coming. Uh, and not only that, we are making uh, solo versions for a lot of these games to play independently. So it's not just about the class experience. It's also about that independent learning experience as well. Um, what's great about uh, these student-led game modes is that you can, of course, just start the game and the kids sort of take it from there. Uh, and what's really great is, of course, you can reuse all of the content you may already have. You might have created boots before. So all that old content, that stuff that's in your library, that's that's all new again with these new game modes. So give that a try. Um, and also, because it is student-led, it really frees up more time for you to use um, you know, that you would be just sort of traditionally hosting the, the Kahoot. You can actually now walk around, observe and coach as you go. Uh, and of course, multitask and the side effect. And I think uh, Chase covered this pretty well is like, you know, the, the benefits of this, of course, is the kids improve their communication, their collaboration skills, all these future ready uh, skills that are so important. Uh, and I know the team is really trying uh, to get the setup for everybody. 
to make it, uh, you know, to try for free all of these, the, all of the, 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 the game modes that we have launched so far. If not this week, then early next week. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully you can try some of those before the holiday break. Uh, speaking of new game modes, we have a new game mode called Robot Run on the way. Now, this one is a little bit different uh, where uh, everyone's familiar with these avatars, but imagine now they can move around these avatars and have them run around a, a game board to avoid this giant robot and eventually escape on this rocket ship. So it's a bit like the Submarine Squad, if you're familiar with that one, where it's a kind of collaborative team type of game. Uh, which is also really great for building these sort of future ready skills. So this is launching hopefully already in December. Um, it will launch in December and it will be exclusive uh, for Kahoot Plus Premier Max and Kahoot EDU to start. So uh, when that one comes out, it's going to be very different. So check it out and give us some feedback. We'd love to hear it. Lastly, uh, we don't talk about reports that much, but we should talk about them a little bit more because the, the educators that use our reports absolutely swear by them. Um, we really want to, you know, they can help you really work smarter, not harder, by really helping you focus on areas of improvement. Um, and we're also going to be adding, of course, all these reports uh, for game modes in January. Um, and they're free to use. So yeah, give them a try. And uh, hopefully it really can help transform and make your uh, cahooting a little bit more productive. Great. All right. Last but certainly not least, let's look at creating a Kahoot. Uh, and I don't know if you knew this. I didn't know this. I actually found this out yesterday, but there are over 100,000 Kahoots created every single day. Uh, so if you're creating a Kahoot, you're in very good company. A lot of people are creating Kahoots. Uh, and maybe the easiest way to get started uh, creating a Kahoot is with one of our pre-made templates. Uh, we have a bunch of these on the template. For example, get to know your teacher. Uh, there could be student selfies, uh, introduce new topics, reinforce knowledge, and the, there's a long list. So there's a lot of different templates to choose from. Um, and if you if you there's a template you you know you can't find what you want, uh, what a lot of educators do is just find a Kahoot they like and just duplicate that and then they create it or sort of customize that for their needs in their class. Uh, so that's another way you can think about how to get started is it's not like start from scratch, but either, you know, take a template or find a Kahoot and duplicate it and get going from there. So that's a really uh, productive way to get going. Alternatively, you could try out the question bank feature, uh, which is probably the most unsung feature on the, on the platform, but is super powerful. I would argue even almost more powerful than, than the AI, which we're going to get to in a minute. Because what's awesome about it is, uh, and you can see it there, you know, when you click on add a question, there's a tab called question bank. Uh, there's 6 uh, billion questions. So you can imagine we've been in business for like 10 years. All of the questions that all the educators have added over the last 10 years, they've been like populating this, this uh, question bank. Um, and what's really cool is that, you know, whatever you want, uh, you can get metadata that shows you, for example, you know, how many times it's been played, the creator. So you know that these questions, you know, have been tested in the wild, you know, they've been out there and people have tried them out um, and you know, they're going to work. Uh, so, which is really, really cool. Um, and just like discover uh, uh, the search uh, that I showed you a little bit earlier, we're going to be enhancing a question bank with AI assistance early in the new year. So this is going to get even better as we go along. All right. Now, speaking of AI, uh, educators, and I, I think the chat's been lit up already today. Um, uh, educators on our platform are really sort of embracing our AI assisted, assisted question generator feature. Uh, and this feature is, of course, live on the platform and is available for all Kahoot Plus Max to EDU subscribers today. Uh, and one, but one, we've had one sort of reoccurring request, uh, and it's that educators want to generate questions from cahoots, uh, and cahoots from their specific curriculum. So not like the open internet, they want to like, just be super narrow about the kind of cahoots and questions that they're creating. So I'm, you know, very happy to say that you'll be able to make cahoots out of your documents. Um, and it, the skiff is a really good example of a geography teacher making a cahoot from their textbook pages. Um, and this feature uh, will go into early access already next week. So by by mid next week, uh, you'll be able to actually you know make cahoots from 
your documents. Uh, and of course, we want to deliver that to you guys before the holidays and make sure you get to play around with that. And this is, of course, available for Kahoot Plus Max and, and Kahoot EDU uh, subscribers. But I'm not going to go more into detail with that because we have the the amazing Steve Sherman. I think Hannah will help out as well, give you a demo of the feature. So we'll just get out the popcorn for that and see how that goes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. Exactly true. Steve is here to show us the clicks, the presses, the navigation on how to exactly use that import tool and excited to see it in action. Thank you, Sean, for all the insights and welcome, Steve, for the hands-on demo. Excited to have you here. Hello. Apparently, I can't show my video. Let's Guys. see. Is it allowing me to show my video? I, it says I you cannot you, start your video. I can see you. <laughs> you can hear me, but you can't see me. Exactly. Um, we'll give you a second to get acclimated, Steve. Take your time. Oh, Steve, there we oh, go. There you are. We Lots of exciting permission. reactions already in the chat and so many different ways that people are already sharing and excited to use the import tool. So I'll let you take it away. Show us exactly what to click, where to go, and how to find it. 100%. And I thought the best way to do this would be to actually demonstrate how I got to test it out as a beta tester. And let me tell you, you have no idea how exciting this is. So I've loaded up my Kahoot screen over here and I'm gonna click on create a Kahoot. I'm gonna go choose a Kahoot. And as Sean pointed out, you can use the templates. You can go to a blank canvas to start from afresh, but I'm going to use the question generator. So I'm going to click on this and notice it does say early access. Certain people will have access to it. But once you get your hands on this, it is a game changer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a topic. I'm going to choose something random like South African history. And I'm going to click on continue. And what it does is it searches the internet and finds me all these wonderful questions that I get to review first. Notice it doesn't just allow me to grab them all. I need to have a look. I'm going to check out who was the first black president of South Africa. Well, we do have four choices and I do like this question. So I'm going to add that question. Let's have a look. I'm going to scroll down. Uh, which tribe was Nelson Mandela a member of, let's have a look. Was it Tosa, Tswana, Zulu, or Sutu? I would agree with this one as well. I'm going to add that. And all I'm doing is I'm adding questions as I review them. You've got to click on this little down arrow just to make sure that you can get to select. Oh, which South African city was the site of the World Cup final? I believe that was Johannesburg. We missed out in Cape Town. I'm going to add that. And let's pick one more. Who led the National uh, Af African National Congress during the Ravonia trial? Uh, I believe it was Walter Sisulu. We'll take that. Now, you know what? That's not a lot of questions. That was only about 10. Qu oh, I wish I had more. Well, guess what? You go along to the refresh button. And all of a sudden, it starts bringing a whole bunch of new questions. There might be one or two repeats. But let me tell you. You, oh, which South African leader won the Nobel Peace Prize? Uh, well, actually, I believe there were two. Technically, it was Nelson Mandela and F.W. de Klerk, but I'll take that because I can always adjust that afterwards. And, of course, you go through, and if you need more questions, you click on Refresh, and look at that. A whole bunch of other questions start popping up, which is absolutely amazing. And let's pretend I'm done with those questions. Here comes another fancy feature. If I click over here, who was the first black president of South Africa? It starts giving me recommended images. I like that. I'm going to choose that one. Oh, failed to load. Let's try it again. No, didn't want to load. For some unknown reason, those images are not loading for me. But you can get the idea that it actually makes recommendations. Let's go over here. Which tribe was Nelson Mandela a member of? It didn't have any recommendations there. 
So I would just have to click and maybe type in Tosa, and then I would be able to maybe pick a lovely image that could help with that particular question. So you would get all your questions. Afterwards, you would go in and look for images. There will be some recommendations. Some of them are not even appropriate to the actual question. That is up to your discretion to make those adjustments. But you know, this is wonderful. And this is a huge time saver. But I thought to myself, you know, it'd be really nice if I could take a PDF document that I've created and just import questions from that specific document. It could be a curriculum document. It could be a topic that you're covering in class and you want to get the kids to review what it is that you're covering. So get ready for this one. Oh boy. I'm going to add a question and I'm going to go to question generator. But instead of choosing my topic, I'm going to go to upload a file. And I just happen to have some files. Let's see if it's going to work. And I've got a whole bunch to choose. I've got Astronomy 101, which is a document that I put together. 15 ways to deliver a wow presentation. Let's try that one. And I'm going to choose it. And literally within seconds, it's taken this PDF. And it's starting to make questions out of the document that I have. This is a game changer. Can you imagine you've got all your notes for the year? You literally take your notes, put them in, and it will start creating questions. What is the purpose of a wow presentation? Let's see. I like this. I'm going to add that question. Um, how can presenters teach the audience something new? Oh, by using live quizzes. That's not a bad idea. I'm sure we can do something like that with Kahoot and slides. And of course, let's pick one more question. Why is it important to practice a presentation? To boost your confidence. I like that. I'm going to go to add that question. And now all of a sudden, I have these questions. And if I go and review these questions, notice some images will pop up. It says, Oh, that was from a previous question. Which South African city was the site of the FIFA World Cup? I'll just pick, choose that one there for some unknown reason. <laughs> it's not letting me choose those particular images. But what is interesting is that, of course, all the questions are created for you. And I personally think that that is a game changer. But, you know, I must be honest, Hannah, and you can help me out with this. When you get to beta test, certain things, you start thinking, oh, you know, I love this feature, but I need to add a few things onto my wish list. And the first thing I was thinking is, if you're going to import a certain size document, maybe you don't want the whole document. Maybe you only want a certain section. Is there something that we can do about that? Steve, there is so many different ways that the AI tools are continuing to grow. And we it's great to work with beta testers like you because it really helps us kind of steer our direction and be sure that our goals are totally in line with the wish list that you have in mind. And in fact, I'm hearing behind the scenes that there's actually more that we're ready to share. So I'm going to bring Sean back and hear it firsthand from his perspective and know what else is there? What can we learn more about? And welcome back, Sean. Thank you. Great uh, demo, uh, Steve. Trust me, this is we're going to work out all the kinks on the images. Uh, so that's that you're keeping us honest. That's very good. Um, and again, it will be uh, available for early access on um, uh, Q plus Max and QEDU. So if you're on those plans, just please give it a try uh, before the end of the year and hopefully give us some feedback on that. We would love to get that. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that was awesome. I mean, uh, I really enjoyed uh, getting that demo for you guys. And, and hopefully you learned today a few things, um, you know, how to find a Kahoot, how to play a Kahoot, uh, and hopefully how to create a Kahoot more productively. Uh, I really hope that, you know, all of you can save some precious time and energy and on the back half of the school year. Uh, so yeah, that's been, uh, it's been really awesome. Um, and, you know, in case you've been wondering why I've been wearing this, uh, what's incredible sweater, 
Uh, it's, you know, holiday season offers are here. And more importantly, I think uh, we have a great new uh, holiday game mode dropping tomorrow for everybody to try. And you can see some of the images there uh, where we have, you know, awesome holiday characters uh, and, and, you know, a really fun looking theme with podium, etc. So yeah, that's coming up tomorrow. And again, yeah, some holiday offers there as well for Q plus max where you can save up to 20%. And as usual, if you're, if your school's interested in Kahoot EDU, just to drop us a note at schoolpack at Kahoot.com. Um, and we can set you up with the end of year uh, quote for that. Uh, so that was all from me. And thank you, uh, Steve, again, for that awesome demo. I really, really appreciate it. It looks really good and happy to see that you're uh, having fun with that one. So uh, oh, I, thank you. So you I, I do love it. But I'm not finished with my questions yet. Hannah, I thought uh, I noticed something when I was importing the questions. It was only importing quiz questions. I think it would be really useful if we could import other styles of questions. Steve, we totally agree. And we know that sharing across a variety of mediums in different formats really helps meet kids where they are, those multiple intelligences. We know that kids learn in so many different dynamics and formats. And I think that, or at least I'm brainstorming with you together that I know that the AI and import tools are continuing to grow. So added to the wish list already is that page selector that we have plans for. We have continued plans for how we can really add variety and change the different format of questions types. And of course, with all that to say, whether you're sharing your own files or files from your county, your campus, your community, we never, never share that those files with other people. So just as Kahoot continues to be safe for our players, we also know that Kahoot is safe for our hosts and our creators. And we want to see all that learning in action. So without further ado, Steve, maybe we share, demo it, experience it and play along ready for the Kahoot. What do you say? I say we should. Are we giving away swag for people who do well in this? Of course, we always oh, give I away swag. It. Swag to wear, swag to share in your class, swag to share with your students and players on all things way that you can transform your teaching. So if you are following along and you know exactly what learning looks like with tools powered by and from Kahoot, we're glad to have you here and we hope you stick around for the last few minutes of our final gameplay in Kahoot. We know that you, or we hope that you joined um, learning along and sharing with us today and we're excited to see all the different ways that you can show us what you know joining our kahoot the game pin here is five six four three zero eight six we have our first nickname on our screen and we're asking for your player id or your email address to get started not so we can email you a whole bunch and ignore and bother you and pester you but instead so we can give you swag after the fact so don't skip away from that question it's important so we can be sure to follow up with some prizes steve our kahoot is certainly growing pretty fast oh yes it is and i believe that this particular kahoot might be testing their memory with regards to some of the new ai features it's exactly testing their memory with ai <laughs> it's like i should enter as well maybe i could win some of these prizes <laughs> see that would be considered cheating we only like honest players playing with integrity and um, throughout the game just like with every kahoot players can continue joining even after the game has begun so i'm thinking that we get started right away and give people an opportunity to play along with the last few minutes we have left of this webinar and then always you can find that game pin in the bottom center of the screen to get started let's do it Steve, i'll right. let you take the first question cool okay let's have a look at our first question it is a regular quiz question but it is a multi-select when you're in a pinch and short on time to lesson plan, where can you find ready-made cahoots? Oh, this and you've is got coming five all the way choices. back from the beginning. I know lots of choices, and sometimes you feel pretty busy to read all of those resources to find all your curriculum to sort through the lesson plans. And at the beginning of our webinar today, our friend Daniel in the Philippines was telling us all the different ways that you can find content ready-made already existing on Kahoot. So think back to your inspiration and those ideas that he gave as well. So maybe some others if you're part of our Kahoot community. It's a multi-select, so there's more than one answer on this one. I, I mean, there might be two, there might be three, there might be four, there might be all five. Who knows? We'll find out. It seems that already 200 people have found out and they're ready to share their answers. They seem and to ideas. know what's going on. 
And I think also what's really cool is sometimes these cahoots that you find are ready-made and sometimes they're like 99% ready-made in the sense that it doesn't quite fit your class. And there's always options to duplicate cahoots or just modify the cahoot in your own library in case you need to update it. Maybe it's outdated from years past or maybe it's not even factually exactly correct anymore. You can always update it for your own, but it seems like people know where to find their ready-made cahoots. I'm very impressed. Obviously, the Discover page is, is is quite key for most people. Should we have a look at our leaderboard? Let's see what's happening on our leaderboard. Fuzzy Deer, Witty Frog. Uh, uh, then we got Bold Shark, Hero Dog, and Agile Llama. What about our next question? Love to see it. Oh, it's a true or false. true or false. 50-50. You never know. Hmm. Airy Kahoot can be played as both a classic Kahoot and a game mode. I don't know. I see a lot of answers are coming in on that one. Are we going to get to 300? And only a few seconds left. So that 50-50 chance, the true and false. What are you thinking? I'll give you a hint if you haven't decided already. Chase helped us understand this one. Uh Aha. Yeah. (laughs) 271 of you got that one correct. I'm sure that's going to affect our leaderboard. Let's and a, a great way to remember that sometimes content that you've already presented to students, maybe at the beginning of a unit, at the beginning of the day even, can always be repurposed on Kahoot. You can share it in so many different ways, whether as an assignment for um, home, playing at home and playing in small groups, or even repurposing it in a different game mode to add that novel excitement. Totally a different way to keep learning. Absolutely. And did it impact our scoreboard? A, a little bit, but you know, Hannah, I was just thinking about that. I was running an event in Ireland And it was a big event. We had lots of schools from around Ireland taking part. And three or four schools, uh, you know, apologized. They couldn't make the event. So all I did was assign the same quiz to them and gave them a time frame. And they were still able to participate. And we were still able to collect their results. So there really is a very useful way to be able to share all of this content knowledge with your students, even after the big event, which you do live in the classroom. So true. You can always continue learning offline. We love to hear that. Now, I know this one. Every Kahoot can be played many times, transformed by how many different game modes? I and did see Sean gave that away, didn't he? Uh, sort of, because you have to read the question so carefully. It's almost a trick question. The game modes continue to be added, updated on the Kahoot platform, and some game modes are ready to play. They're available. You can see in the picture, I added some image reveal as a hint, and some are still to come. We're always adding new game modes to the platform based on recommendations from teachers like you and from our greater community. So we'll have to see. And I can't wait to try that new one. Oh, because you know, I love that submarine game. That's one of my favorites. Seven. Woo! As of How now, of them? course, always changing. And if anyone has a suggestion, I know some people are just watching along and not playing the games themselves. Tell us your ideas in the chat. I want to know where, what other game modes should we look for? What ideas would be so exciting to your students in class? We'll have to see. Let's see. Oh, Hero Dog has jumped into first place with Mountain Horse, Diligent Pelican, Silly Hamster, and Shishisha. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. That would be a tricky one. Let's see. It's a multi-select. That means there's more than one choice. AI-enhanced tools are everywhere across the Kahoot creator, including ooh, auto-sorting, auto-suggestions, AI-enhanced. AI assisted predictive text. These are very challenging ones. Hmm. And of course, Steve, as we've said with every question so far, basically everything is growing. There's still so many ways the Kahoot tools are expanding and having even greater features. So, so far, at least, we're seeing AI in these ways. So it says AI predictive text for question answers. Maybe that will still be coming. And right now we don't have AI predictive text, text, but of course we have AI question generators. So just giving one word helps you create an entire library of codes. 100%. Let's have a look. Oh, here a dog still in the lead. And of course, Agile Llama has jumped into fourth place, but the scoreboard hasn't changed much, but it was a combo breaker. 19 players. Oh, they lost their little lead there. Steve, this question came from you, so no hints. Don't give any cheating information away. But if you want to Kahootify an imported file, maybe like you were saying, from resources you've made and saved on your own local computer or even from curriculum resources provided by your school or your community, 
how do we do it? And remember when you're doing puzzle, it goes top to bottom. So sequence top the first bottom. step down to the last step. They're out of order right now, if you haven't already been able to tell. I think you must tell the development team I'd love a big arrow pointing in the right direction from top to bottom. That just well, makes Steve, it easier for me. Well, Steve, that's why we're here. We always facilitate cahoots. It's never just a, oh, go do it, sit in the corner and, and do it on your own. We have so many options to share and facilitate together. I love it. I love it. Well, we've got 12 seconds left, 256 answers in already. That's pretty impressive because these ones are the hard. They take a little bit longer to actually slide them around and submit their answers. But wow. And that's why I increased the question timer. I agree. You want some extra think time on this. And we're 20. close. But Steve, we might need a review from you. Can So can you help well, us Well, let's clarify? just have a look. So you log yeah. into Kahoot and you go to create and you choose the AI question generator. Then, of course, you're going to import your PDF. Then you're going to review those questions and choose which ones you want. And, of course, you're going to... Uh, Hannah, what about questions that have been chosen but might need to be corrected on the fly? Could that could that be something that's coming up in, in the future? Well, totally. You can already do that in the Kahoot Creator. So once you add those questions, they're not stuck, tattooed, and permanent. You can, of course, either add more options or edit existing options, always modify it, customize it to what fits or what's most accurate for your learning. 100%. Then, of course, you're going to select that file. Oh, look at that. We've had an upset already. Someone in the lead. I don't know how to pronounce it. But I certainly know that you are sitting there in first place with Hero Dog coming in second. Mountain Horse, Diligent Pelican, and Expert Lark is now in fifth place. True or false, it's just a 50-50. You can either know it or you don't, or just guess. Once a file is imported to Kahoot, the file is saved to your library for later use. Ho -ho! I'll give a hint. I'll give a hint. It's not a giveaway, but it's a hint. We know that Kahoot already is so safe for learners. We don't stick, we don't store and really don't even collect student login information. We don't need to know many specifics because we don't keep it. It's all up to you and your school and how everything is organized. So of course. Ooh, look at that. They fell for that one. Safety first, people. We do not want your school's private information stored on a server for people to access. So of course that changed everything rockstar elk knew that witty frog and mountain horse and of course we have hero dog but fuzzy knew you are the highest climber 144 places let's have a look at our next question it's a drop in oh this looks challenging not satisfied with ai generated questions drop a pin on the button that generates new content so remember i told you when i was creating my quiz i needed more questions where did I get those extra questions from? One of those buttons somewhere along the line helped me to generate new questions from my PDF document. Do you know which one it is? Yeah, Steve, mm. you are making it a big deal. This question isn't tricky. We can use the picture as a hint. There's even like almost a synonym of this exact experience on the page itself. And if you haven't experienced a drop, coin question, drop pin question before, to drop your pin and place the pin on the correct spot of the question, you'll want to move the picture around. So pinch and zoom and move to make sure that your blue pin is exactly on that button. And we'll have a chance to review it all together to see if people were really paying attention to those details. I don't know which is harder, to move the pin by moving your finger around the screen or to move the picture so that the pin lands on it. Look, oh, they're all over the place. <laughs> and a great way for us to see that it's such a good pulse check to do it live that we see a lot of people new to press the refresh button. But I'm thinking that people that weren't quite sure just added a pin to consider, hmm, I want to just see the correct answer. This is a great way. The teacher's in live time. When you're playing a drop pin, always, you can kind of gauge who's paying attention, who might need some extra support, so on and so forth. Absolutely. Well, let's have a look at our leaderboard. Oh, it skipped that one. We're going to go to the next one. Type in this answer. Coming soon, the something selector allows creators to choose which documents or document to reference within an imported file. So you're going to choose a, a couple of pages within your imported file, not the whole file. Oh, I wonder what that Especially word would Especially helpful, be. Steve. Like I'm thinking about often 
at least in my experience as an elementary teacher, very often we'd plan the entire unit. Sometimes that was pages and pages and resources and resource files and files. And the document itself may have been like 90 something pages. Of course, I wouldn't want to create a Kahoot with 90 pages. I'm interested just in this small section of a larger unit. So this tool coming soon to that AI question generator and file import will allow you to really get specific on what content you want to Kahootify. I mean, what about curriculum documents from various governments? They give out curriculum documents that are this thick. Yep, exactly. So hopefully this feature makes it even quicker and more efficient for our teacher users. And let's awesome. see what our what our best choices were. So we had some corrected ideas already, and maybe we take a second to review the remaining answers. Just in case I see pages. Done. We could give that one. I'm um, thinking so too. The others, I'm not seeing any any misspelled pages. There's one that says PDF selector, but maybe there'll be other types of documents that it could import. Um. I An think that's the only one. And keyword that's close. Text selector. Yeah. Not quite, because you can't highlight specific paragraphs. But what about documents? Files and pages. Documents. That I one and that. the one to the left of it, up next to Wikipedia. I think we've pretty much got it. I say we stick with that. That sounds Let's like a, do that. a fair way to continue. Oh, and a word cloud. What subject area or lesson topic will you use AI enhanced question generator to plan, create, and share? So Our final question in. of the day. We always, always, always appreciate the feedback and insights from teacher users. We know that you're actually experiencing and working with Kahoot day in and day out. So to end our Kahoot before we see that final scoreboard and our podium today, maybe some areas that you're excited to use this AI tool. I'd love to know. I do love the popcorn sound you're hearing. Pop, 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 pop. Those answers are coming in very quickly. With two seconds left, let's see how many more we can squeeze in. What are we thinking? So Ooh, subject think areas that are most popular would say math, English, Steve, I'm math, sure you're excited to hear that science. in science. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Cool uh, taxation principles got a small little section there. <laughs> but so many different perspectives, so many different use cases. And that's the beauty of technology that you can really apply it to any situation, any content area. And we're excited to see how teachers continue to create with those Kahoot tools. Shall we check out the podium? I think we should check out the podium. Who came in third place? We have Cheerful Kitten Cheerful out of Kitten. nowhere. Where did Cheerful Kitten come from? Rockstar Elkin second and in first place, we have... Oh, that we did not expect either. We had a complete change over Jolly Kitten. Complete, that was a completely different top five to what I expected from about two rounds ago. It just wow. goes to show so much learning can happen throughout an entire, entire experience. And excited to reach out to those podium winners, our top five today. So you'll get an email from us, of course, with the recording. You'll get an email from us with that downloadable certificate. And we'll also reach out to those podium winners. We'd love to celebrate you with some swag. Excited to see how people and educators everywhere are continuing to learn and save some time, really transform the teaching experience for your students and for teachers, whether you're working with coworkers, teammates, colleagues around your community. Thank you, Steve, Chase, Daniel, and Sean for joining our webinar today. And thank you all of you teachers for sharing, contributing, and staying active in the chat. Always fabulous to hear new perspectives and new ideas. Of course, you can continue watching this webinar on demand. Check back on our event page, the same page you registered for the event later this week to watch the recording on demand. And as always, we encourage you to share it with any coworkers, with any teammates or community members who also might enjoy it. But we are so glad you're here today to join and partake with us. Thank you for sharing your insights and happy cahooting. We'll see you on the next podium. Thank you. Bye-bye.